All right, we're back. It is Thursday, two days left in this challenge. I think we have a real questionable result in board two. It could be a massive swing that we're way behind on at this point, so we might be in catch-up mode. I also, if you watch yesterday's session, I had a nice uh, lucky circumstance where I made one of the worst plays I've made in a while, but came out smelling like a rose because of something the robot did later. Here, I have a 13 count. I love the intermediate cards on this hand. When, when we talk about intermediate cards, we're talking about cards that aren't honors but can take tricks. This hand has a whole bunch of them. Jack-10, 9 of hearts, king-queen, 10 of diamonds, ace-king, 8 of clubs, 10 small of spades. That being said, I'm still not going to go crazy yet. Right? I have four boards left. I don't need to do anything nutso. I'm, nutso would be opening a no trump with this, which is a severe under... Uh, over evaluation of this hand here when we open a diamond it goes a spade two diamonds three diamonds on our right well we've opened the bidding we have a normal opening hand we don't have a whole bunch of extra shape even though we do have four diamonds partners not guaranteeing more than four in these situations so here this three diamond bid on our right was just a support for spades in a good hand right so now when they're in three spades what do you want to do make your bid folks i forced you to pass originally would you like to take another call So these are really important positions. There, there is so much against making a bid in this spot. Number one, we're usually just gonna use the law of total tricks. And at this point, we don't know we have more than eight diamonds. Partner's the one that has that information most likely. <coughs> but also, when they've bid three spades and it's gone pass, pass, your four diamond bid might do two things that are bad for you. It might get you to a spot where you're just going minus too much or you're going minus against a score where they're just going minus if they play. The other real problem is, what if you bid four diamonds and they decide to now bid four spades when they weren't willing to do so themselves and they make it, right? So you don't want to you don't want to balance them into a game. You also will need to take a look at the vulnerability. We are vulnerable, which means if we step out of line and we go down just two, even if we're not doubled, that's minus 200, which is more than they can ever make in three spades. So here, we have to be very disciplined and just pass and be happy that we have a reasonable defensive hand against spades. So let's take a look. And I'm going to show you what we do in the defense class pretty much every hand. In fact, let me ask you right now. I'm going to show you the auction. It went a diamond. They overcall the spade. Righty made their cue bid and then lefty bid just three spades. So I'd like you to tell me what you think partner is looking at as far as values on this hand. Take a moment. Pause it if you need to. Take your time. I'm gonna go relatively quickly and I'm gonna show you how I would do this normally. I would just say, okay, my right-hand opponent, I can see the dummy has 11 points and I'm only dealing with high card points because this is just straight math for us, right? So I have 13, that's 24 between these two hands. And what would he expect West to have for an overcall? Well, at the one level, it's only eight to 17, but let's just give them a generic 10. That's not the worst number to give them for an overcall. So that's 24, 34, that means partner has about six points which should make some sense, right? Partner did raise us in diamonds, right? So they showed some values. So the less this player has, if they have like nine or eight, the more our partner has, but recognize that's about the lay of the land here. And this is a very good process to go through every time you're defending because every time you're defending, the opponents have made at least one bit, right? So you're gonna have some information to go on. Here, we're just gonna play the nine of hearts, lower of touching cards when you have a sequence and you're being led to. And here, uh, normally you would win the queen, but I'm gonna try to, this is a false card situation. I'm gonna try to deny I have the queen just to confuse declare here. All right, so there goes the king of diamonds. And now the question is, why the heck did partner lead hearts? I'd let a heart in this hand for some reason. Well, I think it's because they're short. So I'm gonna lead a low heart. If they're roughing, oh, if they actually were leading away from the ace, even worse. Okay. So I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> I'm so confused with the robot's choice here. They led low from ace third, I guess. It's kind of a weird choice. Um, all right. Well, let's take our clubs first, right? And here's what we want to make sure. We want to make sure we take enough tricks to avoid the pitch that's probably going to happen on the queen of hearts, right? The, the Queen of Hearts is going to give Declare a pitch in their hand. We want to make sure it's not like a, a, a card that they can't get rid of in a different way here. All right, so now it's going to go Spade to the King. They're cashing the Ace of Diamonds. Now they'll probably cash a Heart here after they play a Spade. Oh, maybe not. 
There it is. We're off a diamond and then no queen of hearts. Look at this. Interesting. Right, so we can now. We're not expecting to Claire to have any hearts, right? Because if partner led low from a small. Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, robot. Whatever. I mean, I don't know how to figure that out, guys. I I could could have given my partner a heart rough. And let's take a look. We, we should beat this. But I've never seen the robot do this before in my entire robot life. Uh, take a look at their opening lead. They led low from a, <laughs> ace doubleton. I mean, all they have to, if, they, if, if you have ace doubleton, you lead the ace and then you lead low. So here they went way outside the box. And now when we determine they have the ace of hearts, it's very, I mean, it's almost impossible to consider them having ace doubleton, right? But notice, once they lead a club, if we just lead a heart here, we're, we're golden, right? Or if we lead a club and then a heart, right? We're going to get this a trick if we just do this. But as it turns out, when I play this, I now still need to lead a heart, and I still don't get it in my stupid head to do that. And and there it is. So I, I, this is partner bamboozling us, folks. Right? You don't expect them to lead low from ace doubleton, right? I expect them to lead low from ace third sometimes, very rarely, but sometimes here... This is just, you know, outside of my uh, comfort zone with the robot. And, you know, we, we were pun punished accordingly here. I'm sure the other robot is going to figure this out. So this looks like it could be another swing. We might be getting pummeled in this match, guys. We're going to need to come back here and take a look at this hand. One club pass to you. What do you do? Make your bid. This one's pretty automatic in my book. This is three no trump. 13 to 15 balance, especially knowing that partner cannot have a bigger hand than ours because we know we're not bidding a slam. In realistic situations, I might bid a diamond. In fact, I would bid a diamond with this hand just in case partner wanted to show extra values and then we'll know we have slam. In these tournaments or these challenges, we know we have the best hand. So 15 opposite 15 is not gonna be a slam, which is the most they could have. We just get to bid our game. 13 to 15 balanced, no four card or longer major. Exactly what we're looking at. Take a look at this. We bought really nicely in partner's hand. How many winners do we have, folks? Yeah, we have enough, right? We have five clubs. Two hearts for seven, two spades for nine. So anything else is a bonus. Just have to make sure we take nine of those tricks. Um, on this hand, we could go a number of different ways. We have we have easy pitches on the clubs. So I'm going to actually play the all the clubs first. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to decide what to do next, whether that's diamonds or spades. I can always take a spade finesse, right? I just want to see some tricks first. And I can make very simple pitches of two small diamonds for my hand on those clubs. So in this case, when I'm not really having to make terrible decisions on pitches, I might as well just run the suit and pay attention to what the opponents do. So it's dividing evenly, three and two. Here comes a heart pitch. Good, we don't mind seeing that. There's another hard pitch, lovely. There is a spade pitch by lefty, another hard pitch by righty, and another spade pitch by lefty, interesting. So at this point, we can't guarantee anything, but you, what you would guess, just based on what you've seen, is the queen of spades is probably more likely to be in this hand, because we've seen two spade pitches, again, not guaranteed. And the, this right-hand opponent has pitched nothing but hearts. So it looks like Westy has some length and hearts left, considering they let it. But East has pitched so many that they can't have too much in reserve over there. Here, I'm just going to try to slide a diamond trick in. I'm going to play a low diamond. And if, they, if I see an honor, I'm going to cover. And if I saw a low card, I would just have played something that was able to beat the East player's hand just to make sure West is on lead. So here... Maybe they lead a diamond back. Yeah, let's develop that 10 of diamonds. We'll take that. And now what do they do? Okay, there's the 10 of diamonds. There's another spade, folks. So now watch this. Now I'm going to pitch a spade. Now I'm going to play a heart to the king just for some information. There goes that queen there. Interesting. But now, okay. <laughs> All the information we needed was right there. There's that queen of spades we can claim now. And we will take uh, 11 rippers on this one for making five. All right. And take a look. Lefty was pitching spades because that's all they had. And this is a typical, another odd robot choice. 
Obviously, a spade is the best choice of leads with left-hand opponent's hand, right? They chose to lead the Jack of Hearts, trying to find partner, and to be honest, they found him. <laughs> they found partner in the biggest way. But as this hand turns out, there's really not much they can do, especially considering that spade position is going to be revealed very quickly. And we're just going to take the requisite number of tricks, and we get an extra one just with that extra diamond holding that we have. All right, so here with five spades, sorry, with five diamonds, two, three spades for eight, and two hearts for ten, with the 11th trick, we get that extra diamond, and they, they helped us out with that by leading towards the uh, their partner's queen and setting up that 10 for us. So we'll take it. Again, we may need more stuff to handle two potential bad boards. Number seven, we could have beaten three spades. And number two, we may be a big swing. So we might already be losing this one. But we're going to keep pressing along, and we're going to see where we're starting tomorrow, which is Friday. Here's board nine, folks. What are we going to do with this one? One spade by partner, two clubs on our right. Make your choices and we'll see where we end up. And we'll also see all the results of this tournament tomorrow on Friday. So join me then, guys. I'll see you there.